starting five out there for Indiana. Four to shoot George. Wade trying to stay with him. George pulls up. Puts it in. Paul George again. 15 fourth quarter points for George. And a four-point Indiana lead. That's good defense. Just better offense by George. Wade guarded by George. Wade looks up at the shot clock. Fires in the corner, Lewis for three. It's good. Richard Lewis with his fifth three-pointer of the game. A bad job by David West falling asleep on the weak side and a great find by Wade. The veteran Lewis, huge contributions. Stevenson trying to draw a foul. And I like LeBron James switching on Paul George. Paul George from downtown does it again. He's got 34. What a monster second half for George. Almost a steal. Wade will try a three-pointer. Can't get it to go. Bosch, the rebound taken away, but a loose ball foul. And Frank Vogel is red hot. And the right call. Good job by Bosch crashing the offensive boards. Listen, I understand the reaction by Frank Vogel wanting it so badly, but that's clearly a good call. Chalmers kicks it back out. Bosch, Bosch, a three-pointer, banks it in. Bosch makes it a one-point game again, and a big smile from Bosch down the other end. He has 11 points here in the fourth quarter. Well, I'm Indiana. I got to get the basketball to Paul George. George gets it. Another three. Off the mark. Hibbert the rebound. Steps back out. And George will reset as we're under a minute remaining. Hibbert against Bosch. Poked away. Hibbert holding. Frank Vogel's One. trying to get a timeout. A three. Bang! Paul George from downtown. What a fourth quarter performance from George. And the Pacers go back up by four. Wade will inbound. In the hands of James. Stevenson right up on him. Sticks his tongue out. James pushes off a bit. Gets it to Bosch. Bosch will try a three. Too strong. Won't go. Hibbert the rebound. Allen and Stevenson crash. They throw it ahead to Hill. Hill alone. Blocked by James. Picked up by Bosch. 18 seconds to go. Lewis for three. It's good. Lewis from downtown. It's back to one with 16 seconds remaining. What a turnaround as Hill took the shot. An amazing block by James to recover. And now the Pacers will have to inbound. The Heat have a foul to give. Good ball denial. Knocked away by Battier. And they say last touch by the Heat, but they can review it. Battier claiming George touched it last. And they will look at the replay. Last two minutes of the fourth quarter in all of overtime. And when you have that foul to give, you can be extra aggressive defensively. On that replay, it looks like Battier touched it last. On that replay, it looks like George touched it last. Well, it looks like it's clearly off of the right hand of That's going the other Paul way. George. You look, two different replays. Two different looks. This is the one that's pretty definitive. Although is Battier's left hand still on it? That's a great point. It's very close. Steve? Well, Mike, I'm looking at it three, four, five times, and I can't tell myself just like you guys. So it's a tough call. It's got to be clear and conclusive, obviously. So I think the play on the court should stand unless they have another angle we're not seeing. There it's touching the... Man, that is tough. 
But that one appears like Battier did touch it again. Wow, is that close? Indiana ball. Battier disagrees. I, I, it looked like that was the right call. They have Stevenson out of the game because he's not a great free throw shooter. But that's a two-shot foul. On they call a foul on Battier, and it came before the inbounds. Now, they had a foul to give, so I believe it's going to be two free throws if they called it a foul. Or is foul. this one free throw by anybody and the ball back out? And George will take it. We're certainly pleased with him taking an excellent free throw shooter. But misses. Scola will inbound. No longer with a foul to give. They get to David West, and Bosch fouls him. 17 points, 8 rebounds for what many call the heart and soul of the Indiana Pacers. Yeah. Hibbert back in for defense. Scola sits down. And if I'm Eric Spolster, I'm going to give great thought to not calling a timeout here. But because they inserted Haslam to rebound, they're obviously going to. But if you have Hibbert on the floor and you're down three, you want to be able to, to keep him on the floor because you'll be able to generate a three-point shot. They only have one timeout left. West misses, call the rebound, and they quickly call time. And on the last possession, they go back to Paul George on LeBron James. Remember game one of the Eastern Conference Finals last year when James made that drive to the basket to win it for Miami. And Hibbert was not on the floor. Wade to James. Shot clock is off. No fouls to give. James drives. Kicks it out. Bosch, a three-pointer. Won't go. Rebound tip taken by Hibbert. Now West has it. He's fouled with one second remaining. Bosch. Had a contested look, but a good look. But exactly what we talked about, that rim protection. You wind up with a wide open shot. Contested late by Bosch, but obviously something that Indiana was willing to live with. And now Miami with no timeouts. Now West can wrap it up by hitting both free throws and making it a four-point game. And again, the Heat have to go the length of the court. Cannot advance it. No timeouts remaining. And I hear fans behind me say, miss it. For what? what? Knock down the free throw is a four-point game and you can't lose. That's why they're sitting two rows behind us instead of across from us like Frank Vogel. The veteran West taking his time, taking every second. Misses. Rebound. Bosch. There's the buzzer. The Pacers are still alive. A thriller in Indianapolis.